Three differences between virtual and in-person networking, besides the obvious. All you have to do is look around and you'll see that technology is on the rise and there are more social networking sites being created every day. Therefore, it's no surprise that people are switching from in-person networking to virtual networking. The debate between the two has been going on for years and there's enough supporting information for both sides to argue a case for either. However, the ultimate question is whether in-person networking has unique value that virtual networking lacks. In this presentation, we'll talk about three differences between virtual and in-person networking. Presenter must master the tech. When it comes to virtual networking events, the host must be familiar with the tech that's being used. Additionally, the platform needs to be kept in mind when the content is being put together. Finally, the host must create and practice presenting the information in a way that works with the platform. One of the first things that a presenter needs to know is that they can't simply upload the information from an in-person event and expect it to work in a virtual setting. The presenter and the attendees need to adjust to the platform. After all, everything runs differently online. Things that may have been easy in a face-to-face -face setting are much more complicated in a virtual one. Therefore, the presenter needs to take time to plan, script and practice the session more than they would for an in-person event. Additionally, presenters must create an environment that is comfortable for attendees, which may mean teaching them how to use the tools that are available on the platform. The time required for activities in a virtual setting versus a physical one is different. Intros tend to go more quickly online when all the attendees have to do is type up a blurb in the chat box instead of spending several minutes on verbal introductions. On the other hand, starting the event may take a little more time than an in-person event would. Don't expect attendees to log on at 10am and you begin right at 10am. They need time to test the tools and make sure that they're not having technical difficulties. You can use this time to allow attendees to make introductions or present a poll or a question for them to answer. This will indicate that the event will be interactive. Include opportunities to engage. When it comes to in-person events, the interaction between the attendees and the presenter, or each other, seems to happen organically. However, this is lacking in the virtual environment. In order to make sure that attendees stay engaged, presenters need to ask for feedback and include opportunities for interaction. These opportunities may include typing poll questions in the chat box or pose a question to attendees so that they can answer in the chat box. Multitasking. In a virtual event, there are a lot of things going on at one time. The presenter is likely to be presenting the information, fielding questions that are coming via chat, engaging with attendees and more. This will most likely require switching back and forth between screens. Unfortunately, Multitasking is not an ability that most people have, but it's a skill that can be improved. However, presenters must understand their limits and plan the event accordingly. They must be realistic about what they can and can't do. For example, it's easy to have everyone type their questions into the chat box. However, it's difficult for one person to move into subgroups and have private conversations. Conclusion as you can see, there are several major differences between virtual and in-person networking events. A virtual event does allow for more participation, but presenters must keep these things in mind.